how to spray and kill all the weeds for your food plot so you can grow some great food plots for deer. That's this episode of Death by Bungie. Well, I thought it was kind of interesting. I was talking to a buddy of mine who hunts, who's been hunting as long as I have, or probably longer, uh, and I was talking to him this week about how I spent the weekend spraying the food plots and putting in the food plots and all that good stuff, and he turned to me and he says, well, why'd you spray them? And I'm like, to kill the weeds. Well, he's like, well, what do you spray them with? And I said, well, I spray them with a Roundup or a derivative of it, something called glyphosate or something like that. I was explaining it to him, and he said, well, doesn't that kill everything? And I said, of course, that's exactly its purpose. That's what it does. It kills everything. He said, well, how do you get stuff to grow there? And it really occurred to me that uh, he didn't understand the whole process, and maybe I could make a video about that, talking about how and why I spray these food plots before I plant. Most people, I think, who've done some food plotting understand that, but I can tell you that if there's one thing that you need to do to have a successful food plot, it is spraying. That is the most important part of the process, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, why you spray, you spray to kill all the weeds, kill all the grass, kill everything there. If you leave it alone, it'll basically reseed itself and start growing again. But if you till it under soon enough, wait about 10 days, three weeks, something like that after you spray, kill all the stuff that's there and then go through and till, and then plant your new crops, you're giving your new crops, your food plot, a jump start over all those weeds, and that way that those, when they grow, they aren't competing with those weeds for nutrition, for soil, uh, for the minerals and whatnot and for water and therefore your crops grow a lot better and the weeds die off. That's the whole point of spraying. That's why we do it. Now one of the things I'm doing on this food plot series is I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. This stuff, the science behind agriculture can get real complicated, hard to understand. I'm trying to keep it simple. The bottom line is this. Kill it, then till it, right? That's what we'll say. That's, that'll be our motto. Kill it, then till it. So basically we're going to kill all the stuff that's there with Roundup or glyphosate, one of those two products. Um, and then after you've done that, you wait 10 days, you wait two weeks. In my case, I wait about three weeks for it to work and then go through until and it works out well. Um, basically the only thing that's gonna pop up here, if you look behind me, um, I've got my red zone growing here and that is starting to pop up, but you don't see any weeds. I mean, if you look around, you might see one or two here and there. There's a little bit of clover that actually survived the spraying, but everything else is gone. The only thing in there that's going to get the jump start here is that red zone that I planted. So, and that's just what we want. We want the healthy, nutritious stuff for deer to grow up there and the rest of the stuff to go away. Uh, so that was the first thing that we did, that I did here was spray all of that stuff and the results are working out good. Now, a lot of people, when I started doing food plots, the first thing we did is we mowed it all and then we sprayed it. The reason we did that was to get the high grasses and all the weeds and stuff off the food plot uh, so that when we came through and put in the, did the tilling and stuff, that stuff wasn't there to interfere with the tiller and also so that it would absorb, thinking that it would absorb the Roundup a little bit better. The reality is, I think now, from the research I've done, don't even bother mowing that stuff first. As long as that stuff is knee high or shorter, just go through and spray, as long as your sprayer can reach it good. The reason for that is, is that Roundup and glyphosate, these different chemicals that you put on there to kill stuff, works on contact with the foliage, right? It doesn't work on contact with the roots. It gets absorbed into the root system to kill the plant through the leaves. So the more leaf you have, the more surface area you have above the soil, uh, the more contact it's going to have with those chemicals and the better chance you're going to have of actually soaking it in, getting it into the roots and killing that plant. Now that doesn't mean that seeds aren't dormant in the soil and they're going to pop up later, but the key is to kill as much of that as possible. Now the other question people ask is, geez, you know, I'm putting all these chemicals on my food plot, is it safe? Yes, that's the bottom line. I'm not concerned with you know, so-called organic this or organic that or whether or not you're supposed to use these chemicals. The reality is it's just science. These chemicals get on those uh, plants, they kill, they are effective to kill those weeds and grasses or whatever they touch. Uh, but once they become in contact with the dirt, they become inert and they basically turn into other things that are not harmful. So there, there's absolutely no scientific reason to believe that they're harmful for your food or your deer or anything like that. Not that I'm going to preach to you on that subject, but the bottom line is I think this stuff is safe. If you don't want to use it, that's fine, but your food plots aren't going to be as effective. That's the bottom line, right? Unless you want to come out here and spend all day picking weeds. 
uh, this is the way to go. And frankly, I think it is an effective, efficient, beautiful way to go. It's gonna make some beautiful food plots, as you can see already. Hey, you can tell from my sprayer here that I'm getting ready to go out there and do a little bit of spraying. So I'm pretty excited about that. It is that time of year. Um, this is the sprayer that I use. It's a 15 gallon job. Uh, Fimco, I guess, is the, the company that made this little item. So there's a walk around of the sprayer. I've used it for three years now. Um, I flush it out at the end of the uh, spraying season. A couple little notes about it. You see the wire on top. The cool thing about that wire, I can take that wire off of there. I'll cut that, that zip tie. That was just for storage. I'll cut that zip tie, run the wire up over the Ranger, and wire it into the, to the Ranger's battery up front on the Ranger. Wire it right in there, and it has an on-off switch that falls right about where the driver's seat is. So I can turn the spraying motor on and off with the switch. So that's awesome. Um, this has a fill hole on the top of the container right there, that giant hole, and it has the wand, which I have not used, but this year I will be using because I'm doing some in-the-woods type plots. Um, we're going to do that. One little tip about these sprayers. It wants to be level, and if you look at this sprayer here, you can see that when I hook it up on that hitch, that hitch right there, if you can see that, that's a little bit high. Um, it wants to be about six inches off the ground because you want that sprayer to be kind of level. With that hitch, I should get a, a, a hitch with a bigger drop on it. Um, and I probably will do that. Last year, I used this sprayer on the lawnmower, and it sits perfectly level, but the lawnmower will not get into the fields this time of year yet because it's a little wet. The sprayer wants to sit perfectly level because if it doesn't, those arms tend to, if I get the front end too high, the arms tend to dip down, and it doesn't get as wide a swath. It, it's sort of meant to spray level, and... Of course, the liquid runs out a lot better when it's level also. But it's a goodly little sprayer. Um, something like this is perfect for doing food plots. You can tote it around. Easy to manhandle and do things with. What I'm going to use for spray is uh, this stuff, the Glystar Plus. I'm using that. <clears throat> that is my Roundup. You know, I use Roundup in the past too. This stuff is basically Roundup. It's the same product, according to the folks down at my Agway, where I buy all my goodies. But I'm also going to spray one little dose of plot max from antler king on it so plot max is uh something they recommend that you put right in with the spray right in with the weed killer and what it does is it helps decompose the stuff that is already on the food plot that's what they're telling me so it should do a little bit better and plus it adds a little nutrition for the ground helps the lime absorb a little bit better and everything else i've already limed every place where i'm going to spray so I'm going to put this on here. The birds are anxious for me to get out of here because they want to get into the bird feeder and they're chirping all around me here. Uh, so I'm going to fill this bad boy up with a mix of Glystar Plus and water and a little bit of Plot Max, and we're going to go get to spraying. I'm going to show you one of my pet peeves. Uh, the instructions. What do you do? You apply this to any new or existing food plot in the fall and spring. New plots, 32 ounces, mixed with 10, 8 to 10 gallons of water. So I can put this bottle in that container uh, that holds 15 gallons and we should be good here's the difference this is my pet peeve round up this stuff all these things if you look at this this is how you are supposed to mix it this book right so you go to college basically to figure out how to use this stuff can't you just put you know this is all nice i understand that everybody's worried about getting sued or whatever the deal is but look at all this i don't want to sit and read this i want to go spray some weeds can't you just you know give me the book that's all fine and dandy put they should put right here on this label right here it should say you know read the book but this is how you use it so what i'm going to do the uh bungee style of mixing is i'm just going to add this stuff until that water turns more of that color how's that no actually i'm gonna i did read it and i'm gonna add the right amount but i'm just gonna basically guess in the end even though i read the most of the book so is what it is. Read the book, I guess. That's an important thing to do. But boy, is that one of my pet peeves. Hmm. Okay, while that is filling up, I'm going to go up to the front of the Ranger here. I got my iced coffee from Dunkin' Donuts with a turbo shot of espresso ready to go here. So I'm ready to really get to work on this beautiful day. So this is the front end of the Ranger. What I do, I got the hood up there. Uh, pop the hood. Isn't that interesting? giant hood that it has but i'm just gonna take a screwdriver take these two points off 
and uh, with a screwdriver here. And then what we're going to do is wire, pull the wire right around. I've already pulled that around, but this is what the wire looks like. I've got a nice little switch that will lay on my dash for the on off of the sprayer. And then these two plug, plugs, I just put them on the terminals. Black on black, red on red, and we're good to go. And then what I do in the, um, when I'm done working with it, while it's still plugged in there, I'll just wad it up and put it right here in this little handy compartment. And there's the finished product, as you see there, all wired in. I'll leave the screwdriver right in the compartment so I have it handy. And I can just shut the hood. If I put it right here in this little notch right here, it doesn't seem to bother it any. So I can shut that hood. We're good to go there. And this thing just sits there. And I have my switch for the on-off right there handy, ready to go. All right, there's the rig ready to go. I've got the arms fully extended, and I think we're going to be able to spray this little plot. You may remember it as the Buckfield food plot. I had uh, a mix here last year of brassicas and clovers and stuff like that. I think it was the throw and grow radish is what I used. That grew really well. I've never limed before. This will be the first year with the lime. Uh, so this is going to be really interesting to see how well this goes. I'm also going to fertilize the whole bit. I'm doing everything by the book this year, so hopefully we're as close as I can. But uh, the other neat thing I've got set up here to keep an eye on the whole process is the handy-dandy GoPro mount. I didn't have a tree to put it on. I wanted this particular view of the food plot. But what I do have, even though I don't have a tree, is I was able to just stab my pruning shears, my loppers that I carry in the Ranger anyway. I carry them with me in case I come across something I need to uh, cut off while I'm in the woods or whatever. But uh, I just stuck them in the ground and clamped it on there. This is the handiest little thing in the world. And if you, uh, if you subscribe to Death by Bungie, you'll see me build one of these. I'm going to build a couple extras this year, I think. So, handy little thing that's just proof that it works. That it's a handy thing to have in your bag or handy anything to have uh, with you. So I'm going to do a little time lapse while I spray this plot. No, life is easy. I said life is easy. Life is so easy. Life is easy. Don't make it hard. If you look right in front of me here, this is the Buckfield food plot where it will be red zone from Antler King here this fall, hopefully. And across there, I'm doing mean bean. I sprayed that a little later. You can see that the spray is just starting to take hold. Well, I hope you're enjoying this food plot series. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already so you can get all the updates and see how the stuff is working out for me. The other thing I'd ask you to do is check out our Facebook page, Death by Bungie. Check that out. Share with me some pictures of your food plots and let me know what you think about these food plot videos I'm doing. If you do things differently, if you think I should do things differently, or if you like or don't like the way I'm doing it, let me know how you're doing it so that I can see and learn and we can share that information. Um, I hope your food plots are going really well. Keep your fingers crossed for rain. And until next time, all hail Bungie. Bungie.